Say hi for me. Good evening. It's March 4th, 2019, 7 p.m. This is the Sutton School Committee. Call the meeting to order. First order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. First order of business is the Citizens Forum. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Hi. I'm going to drop these big chairs now. They're pretty comfortable. <laughs> Ah, good evening, Mike Whittier, 70 Torrey Road, Sutton. Um, I'm here representing the Sutton Teachers Association tonight um, to talk about the, the calendar. Um, and I was here, I think, two years ago, uh, <coughs> discussing the, the feelings of the faculty uh, regarding um, the loss of the February vacation. Um, this time I've taken a slightly different approach, um, and we've done what's uh, an extensive, if not exhaustive, uh, study of the calendars in the past. In fact, I have here every calendar back to 1958 uh, and pretty much discovered that we have discovered nothing new or innovative uh, since that time. Um, the schedule we have now is the same schedule that we had back uh, from 1974-75 to 79-80 and again in 82 and 83. It's the exact same schedule uh, with the loss of February vacation. Um, the, the discussion that's been had here at school committee regarding going to a March vacation with no April and February in the past. I'm going to switch to here. There we go. Is that better? Okay. Okay. Um, actually has been done before. 81, 82, we had a March vacation. Um, I was a junior. Uh, I can remember as a student not being too pleased with it, um, but obviously the school committee at that time decided it wasn't a good uh, good idea either because they went back to a, an April uh, vacation um, and did it that way for one more year, and then 83, 84, we moved back to um, the traditional February and March, uh, February and April. Um, so nothing's really changed uh, with the exception of going before Labor Day. Um, we did have the one year where we went two years before, uh, two weeks before, excuse me, two weeks before uh, Labor Day, um, which was designed supposedly to have a longer school year. Of course, the wild card didn't help us out. We had the snow days and got out on the same day we would have gotten out if we'd stayed with what we had. Um, so nothing really changes. Um, however, the school committee, uh, I've got feedback now, um, the school committee uh, has the role of supporting learning, and, and that's what's most important when we talk about the calendar. Uh, the school committee has a goal, and the district has a goal to district orienting for mental health. And my members, which who initially, uh, when we first went into this February, loss of the February vacation, were quite split. Um, in fact, it was about a third each. Yes, maybe, no. <laughs> uh, roughly, and we pulled up the old uh, survey just to, to look at that. We had the same response rate of about 79, 80% of our membership uh, responding to it, so that there are equal in terms of <coughs> um, Here in 2019, it's a 90-10 split. 90% of our members are saying we need to have a February vacation back. Members are coming to me and saying we need to tell the school committee we need to have it back. Um, if mental health is the priority that we say that it is, I have to tell you, clinical staff of this district who we represent are overwhelmingly in favor of moving back to a February vacation. And the problem isn't in February. The problem is as you get closer to April. Um, you, you, it just compounds as you get closer and closer. Uh, kids start getting on other kids' nerves. <laughs> teachers get on other teachers' nerves. Um, it, it, just, it just crescendos. By the time we get to April, we, we're really ready to go. We don't have the data. I think the district should look at the data in terms of discipline um, and absenteeism um, and really look at it. I did a little, I mean, I don't have access to much of that data. I do get the daily attendance report, which it has at the bottom. I can tell you that last week, the days that I could get the attendance report. Um, yeah, it's, it, but I'm not sure how IPASS calculates because there's another 16 students you have to take out that were listed as field trip. Yeah. 
Those weren't, I don't think, calculated in the absentee. I don't know how I yeah. passed they were. Mm -hmm. So by my calculation, it's somewhere between 74 to 80% of the student body was there last week. I, again, that's my calculation based on what I'm seeing. Um, huh? Well, we'll see. Because um, there was one day that it was 79% based on that, if you don't take it into consideration. 77% one day. Yeah, so. At the high school, at the high school. Yeah. So, I, and I'm just looking at the high school. I don't know what it is. I don't know. What I'm hearing from my members is, is that there are a significant number of people that still take the federal education, regardless. Uh, what I'm hearing from my members is, is that now, because there isn't a dedicated federal education, anything goes between January and April <laughs> in terms of when people go out on vacation, um, which creates a lot of ups and downs and whatnot. I can tell you personally, you know, at the high school level, um, we had kids that were out for a trip during the school year, um, and then we had kids that were out during the February week on a trip. Um, in both cases, we had to give out a number of incompletes, and now we're still catching up with those students uh, coming afterwards. So those are those are issues that are, uh, are there. But so I also have to tell you that in the I don't even know how many years I've been in the leadership roles of this association, we've never had to do mediation between members. As a member to member stuff is the hardest stuff I do. And in the last three years, I've had to do three of them. So there's obviously something going on. Um, so we're here to ask you to just give real serious consideration to option three. I would admit there is one novel thing, and hopefully that's not going to happen, and that is just going to school on Christmas Eve. Uh, <laughs> So you were tired, Michael. There we go. <laughs> got people, got so people talking, didn't it? Didn't mm -hmm. it certainly <laughs> did. <laughs> got my phone ringing, too. I, I brought um, that up and thought everybody would poo poo it right away. Um, before you finish, I hope you'll talk about if, if you take the days in February and add them, what days are better for students? Days in June or days around Christmas? Because I, I'm familiar with the the statements around by June the kids are done and those days really aren't very effective. So with everything you're talking about, I also want to know what are the good days for the kids? Well, I think like any human being, when you, as you get closer to a vacation, things start to drop off. Um, I would say that maybe, perhaps, um, that the summertime is the biggest part. That's the biggest vacation. I think that's a piece of it, but I also think it's also post-testing. I mean, they're testing all the way through April and May, uh, depending on whether it's MCAS or it's in June. And, and June. And it's, I think that's a huge piece of it. So if you take um, three more days off in February, you're adding those days in June. And those are days that we repeatedly hear the kids aren't really paying attention. Do you think that's not true? Well, I, I don't know if it's not true or if those days are just getting shifted <laughs> to earlier. I don't think they're going to pay any more attention on the 14th, 15th, and 16th than they are on the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, if that's when the end of things are. Well, that makes all of June a write-off. So, but yeah, I don't think you... So we've got to stop talking about 180 days and talk about what are the days where the kids are teachable. I don't know if there's going to be an exact calculus for figuring that out. Um, I don't think there's an exact calculus. As I said, things haven't changed. We've gone from a, uh, the, the lowest year I think we ever had was 181 days to the most we ever had was 186 days. I don't think we were, I don't think we <coughs> ever experienced anything more or less than what we already experienced in any of those years. Um, so. Would you cut out more of the <coughs> days and try to make those full days? Would you? Would you drop Good what, Friday? What's the goal? For, for me, the goal is uh, consistent weeks, runs of four and five days for more than a couple of weeks mm -hmm. so that you get bigger blocks of time. Um, not as much school in June because I've heard consistent week of June is really tough if the kids have got summer on their minds. You could start on August 1st and skip June altogether. Together. <laughs> yep. Start on August 1st sure. and skip June yeah. altogether, although I and think, I th I see think some you would move there. the problem. I honestly yeah. do. I think you'd move So it. you got to go 180 yeah. days. I just see the, prob days. the problem to me is going to exist irrespective of what my two out 
S excuse me. This is an open forum, so you'll have a chance to, okay. to speak. <laughs> I think it's going to exist irrespective of what happens because kids get antsy toward the end of school. Whether that end of school was in June, July, August, or we're going year round, kids are going to get antsy before any break. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I'd love, to, I'd love to see the research. I'd love to see the data between uh, non-traditional school years, traditional school years. Um, I'd love to see one of the large, was it Sharon? Some, but one large district just voted to, to choose March break over doing February and April. And I'd love to see why they did that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think necessarily that breaking from the traditional is bad. The reason why the traditional was there was for something that our system no longer uses, which is getting the kids out of school to do crops, to deal with crops. Oh, I, I agree and with you. So we're no longer on the agrarian calendar. Yeah, so, so I think my concern, as um, Paul mentioned, is is the time on learning and consistent time on learning, and choppy weeks. To me, that I think that's tough for everybody. Um, so we run twelve weeks, mm -hmm. starting in September. We run twelve weeks before mm -hmm. Thanksgiving of either four or five days a week, and then you get the three days for Thanksgiving break, the half mm -hmm. and the two days off. Then if you look at January, after you've had the Christmas week and a half off, you run um, uh, you run six weeks and then you get three days off in February, right? So the half day, the half day Friday, Monday, Tuesday. So that's four and a half days of vacation. But So you run a six week run and then you run another, another eight week run through March. So I, I also kind of want to get a sense of, we, we go 12 weeks, September through November. I got to believe by the time Thanksgiving comes, we've got a lot of the exact same situation going well, you on. You have a couple of days in. You've got one in October, one in November. Yeah, same, same deal, right? Yeah. So then we take a week and a half off for December, and then January of weeks in five and four, six, six weeks, and then then you've got the, uh, the February, the two days off. Then March, again, you get a half day in the 20th, uh, and then April the 10th, and then the f full five. So again, looking at the schedule, the runs of long cycles there, I, I don't see them that different. But, but obviously, you all are seeing something different. So that's why I'm saying, where do you, where do you add the good days mm -hmm. if, you, if you take them? Because I'm not wed to. I don't want anybody to have February vacation, yeah. but I am trying to temper that with how do I put in days where the kids aren't waiting for summer or waiting for Christmas Eve, or things like that, where you really got their attention. Is it, isn't it possible that they check out three days before April vacation as well? If you, if you look at the two calendars, the left hand calendar is identical on one and three. So the only two differences are February, June, and one day. So it's, it's really just these four days that we're sort of shifting around. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think it's how you do that within that 180 days. I'm just here to tell you that my members overwhelmingly, and I'll, and I'll share you the commentary with you. I just yeah. didn't get it printed out today. Yeah. Um, it doesn't come out of the survey software very easily unless I pay them money. Um, but I'll pull it out a different way. Um, and get that to you, and you can see what the members are saying. I'm just sharing with you tonight what I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's pretty much it. Um, so, um, and just on one other item that I, is on the agenda there, if you're, you know, I know you're supposed to be putting together the subcommittee for the district survey. Um, if you guys could give serious consideration, first of all, of putting a statement in there about the use of names, and also um, come up with some sort of policy on dissemination. Maybe we can get a discount rate or something if we both pay half the price. <laughs> to be there able we to go. The results <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Hello. I'm Elaine Hawk. I'm the president of the Sutton um, Support Staff. And um, I'm here to talk about the calendar. Um, 
the majority of, I don't have a big survey that I did with my members. I they just, cost money anyway. I <laughs> emailed them and whoever called me, wrote me back, those are the ones I'm talking about. And everybody is overwhelmingly in favor of the third draft. Um, but I have a question on the third draft, is, um, which is the same as the first in one way. Um, what's the purpose of the 20th of December being a half day? <coughs> I have that question as well. Yep. There's no real reason for that. It's not like... Um, Still Good Friday. It's not like the 24th of December where everybody's trying to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's really no reason, and I feel like um, the members that I represent who are hourly paid get cheated out of a half a day's pay okay. when they would prefer to be there working. Okay. They're there to work. And um, Mr. Brennan had just said, why do we have so many half days? That would be one that we could get rid of. Some you know, of unless it's a budgetary <laughs> reason yeah. that you you have that, I don't understand that. That one's not a professional development. No. It's, it's just a half a day for no reason. Okay. Um, the other thought that I had um, regarding the February vacation, we are we do like the February vacation. Staff and students are all sick at this time of the year, and we need to get away from each other. Otherwise, we keep spreading it. Trust me, I know. <laughs> um, but not only that, we are one of, from what I was told, three school systems in the state, tell me if I'm wrong, who don't have February vacation that week. Um, there are a lot of people in my union who are not from Sutton, and they have children in other school systems who have that February vacation week, and they have to try and figure out where their children are going to go, who's going to watch them. So my question on that, um, not being in education, is um, what's the difference between that and when there's a snow day uh, and those of us who have to find care for our children who don't work in education? Good question. I don't have that answer. <laughs> I'm just saying that that's something that okay. we like to consider as a group. Um, sometimes when you, uh, well, for that, if you're on, you'd be on vacation with your children. You might choose to be on vacation with your, with your children on that February vacation week. We don't have that luxury. I wish I had that many vacation days. But I, it's, a, it's a good point. <laughs> I would be fine with not having vacation. I like to work and... and I'm not fine with that. Days. The other suggestions <laughs> you're making, I'm, I'm <laughs> listening to, but that one I'm... Uh, um, let's see, was there anything else that I had? I think that was it. But uh, if you have any good reason why we're here for a half a day on the 20th, I would really love to know why that we have a half a day. Okay. So. Can I, while we're having this Certainly. conversation sure. now, <coughs> You know, one of the things I have to remind myself is I haven't taught for 17 years. So I haven't been in the classroom in front of 24, 25 kids every single day, day in and day out. And so I, I have to remind myself of that and I have to listen to the, to the people that actually go in and do the teaching. Um, and so if we did go with option C, what I would suggest to getting to the point of having um, valuable days <laughs> versus non-valuable days is I would suggest that we go on August 30th. Add that day in. We just get started. We got the kids here. Let's go August 30th. They, they're excited back to school. And I'll, I'll explain why I want to do that. And then on April 10th, Good Friday, make that a full day. Okay. So that becomes half day for the kids. And the other half is a professional, one of the half day professional development days. So that way we, we to address the half days where we're not having another half day for kids. We're going to have a full day for staff and we're not having the choppiness so we pull one of the professional development days somewhere else. The reason why I say the 30th is that would put getting out on June 11th. 
And I say that because then that gives us six days. If we have six days of snow, we're still getting out by the 19th. If you go to the 22nd in school, uh, you know, th then kids are checked out. And the other thing that I'm hearing tonight is we have to address the end of school. What a number of districts are doing now, and something we've talked about, and I think we have to have further talk this year, is we need to look at our internship program for our seniors. Why is that so successful? And so why aren't we doing something those last two weeks after all the testing is done that is creative, that's interactive, that is not the norm of trying to make kids do things like we've done all year, we should be thinking differently on at the end of the year. Um, we can also apply that to other places too. With it. But in this case, when I hear people say that they're checked out after having six weeks of testing, we should be being we should be thinking differently about how we end the school year. That's all. What, what do teachers cover in June? It's the regular it? curriculum. Mm -hmm. So if you say let's not do the regular curriculum in June. Where are you going to cover that? Well, let's do it in a different, different way. way. Let's be creative. And let's, 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 there's a, there's a variety of, th there are a number of districts that are now modeling this. Um, and, I, and I think we should take a hard look at that. Um, having older kids working with younger kids, having a more outdoor education, having different approaches to how we deliver instruction. If it truly is, the kids are just antsy, and they're, they're a little burnt out from the testing and the structure of the, uh, a regular school year, we should be looking at that. But if we made those two slight changes to option C, you still, you know, if you had no snow days, you'd be out on June 11th, but you'd pretty clearly stay, in all likelihood, within that middle week of June. Mm -hmm. And as Lisa Lacurto once said, you know, if you get out that early, then there's such a long expanse over the summer that that has an impact there as well. And so those are my two suggestions with option C. I do want to make a comment about the Good Friday. I would want to see how many people would be taking that day off, including me. I would be taking that day off, as I always do, um, to practice my faith. Um, I don't think it is, um, I, I, I don't want it as a priority over other faiths who practice on other days to say, oh, Good Friday is a day that we must have off because of certain people's faiths. Mm -hmm. um, but how many in our district would ask for that day off? And they have that right mm -hmm. for we've, the law. We've done it. We've done it several times since I've been here. And we have a small percentage of staff, just like other religions, that would access that day. So what we were told in the past was there were so many staff that stepped out on Good Friday that it, did, it really just wasn't, a, again, a good student day because you were fulfilling the subs. Now, maybe that's changed. I don't think it was. You know, there was a small percentage of staff, but there was, again, pushback. There is You're pushback that... Um, it's a full day for staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Great. Hi, I'm Tara DeWolf, 26 Welcome. North Drive. Um, I have a son in kindergarten, so I'm new to this, but I did graduate from Sutton many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the most important thing to look at when you're looking at the school calendar is what works for the children. And where are they learning the most? And I do agree that the choppiness is what disrupts them. So why do we start with two days and then a day off? That's setting the schedule for choppiness. Why do we have that Friday off? Um, at one point, I was under the assumption that the teachers union said that they couldn't work that Friday, and I was corrected. Um, so that's one Friday that I think that should be put back into the schedule. Let's keep the kids in school for the presence as many full weeks as they can. By getting rid of the February vacation, you're creating a choppiness where they're off for a Friday and then two days. 
Um, and they're, again, I'll be the first to admit, it. I took my son out that week. It's an important week for me. Um, but again, his teachers didn't teach anything that week because they were going to have to reteach it when those kids came back. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, don't, you don't think that uh, it's choppy to have the full week off? It's, it's the, the full five days. No, I think a full five days gives them a break versus half a week off. They're kind of like a snow day. It's just kind of an obstructed day in the middle of nothing. So either the full week off or the full, full week, week or nothing. Off. Yeah, off. absolutely. Yeah. The two days, by the way, the 30th off was leaving for a long weekend. And what, again, we were told was those couple of days allowed students to sort of get back into the swing of things, get materials distributed, and then start off for an, in earnest the following week. Now, maybe, maybe somebody agrees that with up, that. But, but, um, and I disagree. Yeah. I think that they're, they're there. They're ready to go back. Um, and they could do a full three days. Wait until they're in high school. <laughs> <laughs> My kindergartner is ready to go back. <laughs> so that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, along the same lines as her. Um, Excuse me. Yes. What you are? Oh, Chrissy Gaska, sorry. Um, I work for the school, but I also have two children in the school system. I also came out of the school system not quite as long ago as Mr. Whittier, but um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> um, but yeah, along with what she said, why do we start school, you know, you're talking about the choppiness, and then they have Friday off. We just had how many weeks off of summer vacation? Nobody needs a long weekend. Okay, and I'm talking from somebody that lives my entire summer in the Cape. Okay, so they don't need another break. Um, same thing with the February vacation as well. You're by giving um, that Friday a half day and then a Monday and Tuesday off, that's two choppy weeks there. I mean, they come back on Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I also, um, I always travel February vacation as well, and this year, I wasn't, I mean, I did travel, but it, it had to be a little bit shorter. But if I wasn't employed through the school, my kids would be out that week as well. Um, that's an opportunity when they can go see their grandfather. We travel to Florida every year for that, that one week. Um, would you send them back to school on the 30th and 31st of December? So they'd have the whole week for Christmas, but you could go to school Monday, Tuesday before New Year's. How, how big of a holiday is that? Um, it's choppy again, but do I think we need more than a full week off for Christmas? No. Um, we had that year, the year before last, I think, where we had almost two full weeks off. Real that close, was real close again. Yeah. That was kind of crazy. And as far as not being an educator and needing to find somebody, like if you have a snow day, yeah, you're talking one day that you need to find somebody to watch your children, not an entire week. Well, That's three, you know, everybody in fairness, gets, it's three days because there's two. No, I'm talking about, he had asked a question before about um, what's the difference in, like if I work in the Sutton School System. I'm just and saying for February don't. vacation, Monday, Tuesday is off right now. Right. It always has been. So it's the th three final days well, that of the was, week that would be. Yeah, right. And we've always, I mean, I came out of the school system as well. We always, always had February vacation. The want the March vacation getting rid of February and April I believe is a, is more of a private school. I also went to private school. Is more of a private school. They tend to follow that calendar. Um, you don't see that very often in. But I definitely I went to a school in Connecticut. We had March off. We didn't do February and April. Um, Is there a New England thing? Yeah, I I, I don't know, but. Um, and also, is everybody keeps talking about them checking out in June, and we got to get them out. We got to get them out. H how early in June are we expecting them to be out? Because it's unheard of to be out. I can tell you for as long as I've been in Sutton, and when I was going through school, I my birthday is June twelfth. Some years we would be out on my birthday. Other years it wasn't until after that. So for us to be out before that, that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. So. 
we've never, I don't know how long you've been in, in, around in town or anything, but it's never been, we're getting out of school, you, you know. I'm relying on Mike's research. I didn't go back to 1958. No, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a window that goes, the 17th is like the sweet spot. Right. It's, it's three days right. we're talking about, by the way, yeah, right? right? We're, we're yeah. moving three days. Right. It's, it's more the, the, the so, value of the days. And I have kids in the school as well, but I also work in the school, so it's a whole different, I mean, I can tell you, I was just out sick for last week, two days. I probably could have been out a third, but I came back. It's crazy. <laughs> they're, they're sick. Everything's going on. I mean, we definitely, I think, could use the week. So. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I, I think we're getting a lot of feedback, and the few people that I heard that didn't want the full week were parents that work in another district. They enjoy having the time off and their kids in school. <laughs> <laughs> there is that side. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I spoke a little bit with a few people, got a few emails like I know we all did. Yeah. I haven't heard anyone pushing back against, you know, the idea of, of including February vacation again. Um, I have. You have? I have. Okay. I have, too. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think they're very they're, they're people not who want to go out in public and say that because okay. there's, there's more folks who are yeah, opposed to it. Yeah, they're not here, I guess. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're I also, one thing I did hear from one of the principals was that because of those three days and because of the out of district teachers uh, who live out of district, they're taking professional development days to professional days. Professional days. days. I'm sorry, I'm sorry uh, personal days. Personal days. days. Personal and professional so development. The quality of the education, if it's a lot of substitutes during those three days because some of the teachers are out for personal Yeah, reasons. that's disturbing. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So that's, that's, that's just a point that I had heard that I thought was a good And I think earlier we had talked about the run from September to December and saying, you know, that's a long chunk. And I don't know if we were inferring that when you restart in January, it's not too many weeks to get to February. But I don't know that those months are even. Um, I think a lot of people struggle in the winter. Yeah. It just uh, emotionally, it's a very different time, short days, whatnot. I think mm -hmm. that can be make people weary. And, and I think Lack for that reason, we have to, what's that? Vitamin, vitamin D. D. Yeah. Um, I think for that reason, I lean towards, you know, shorter distance between break during that period. So there's, there's only three days in the calendar who have 20 days. It's September, full 20 full days, September, January, and March. January and March, obviously, are on either side of February. So you, you do have two very full months. Well, you, March, you've got uh, the, a half day on the 19th and off on the 20th, mm -hmm. right? In January, you're off on the 20th and a half on the 17th. Mm -hmm. So those aren't full months. No, I mean they just uh, they have 20 complete full days of school. Correct. But the lar the, the largest yeah. consecutive time is 27 and a half days, days, which is September into October. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, then you and run. You don't even run three weeks again. And they're scattered January, February, March. Whether you do five days off or not, you've got you've got two and a half days plus the weekend. So it's, it's not like you're a full week in school, right? You're four and a half days out of school. The weekend is the weekend. I mean, you can't include the weekend in the, in the argument of pushing vacation. Why not? Because it's a, every, every week is five days of school. And <laughs> it's Paul's argument. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's, it's two and a half days off. Yeah. Yeah. So, so two and a half in February. Uh, day and a half in January, day and a half in March, then the five. What's on, what's April 10th? That's, that's Friday. It's Friday. That's, Friday. that's Friday. the one that we were back and forth on yeah. right that one stuff. Good Friday this year is right, right on April vacation, so it's just part of April vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't depend on that at all. No. No, this year. Oh. This year it mm -hmm. falls within April vacation. So at least it's really early. First it's ever yeah. in my career it's ever happened. Mike, did you have? I just wanted to two bullet points. One was that the day, the day, um, that Friday in August, or September, depending on where it falls, mm -hmm. um, that's a fairly new invention in our calendar that hasn't been around all that long, and I don't know where the half day before Christmas falls in. Um, we've never done that before. So uh, that, that, there's that historical piece. 
Um, and then with the February to April piece, I, I would also just point out that part of the problem there is that you know between September and December, kids can get out. It's not brutally cold. It's not that they can get out and do things after school or whatever. And you're kind of stuck in the building all day with us, and then you go home and you may be stuck in the building all day too. Is that piece that adds to that? We have more to do on the schedule. <laughs> I, I like the notion of if it's a half day, it's not being used for professional development. We looking at that again and around. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do we do we really need that for that half day? Yeah. How often do we say? I'm, well, I'm really not hung up on no February vacation. I am very much interested in ideas around how do you get days mm -hmm. that are productive. If we can do February vacation <coughs> and have productive days, great. If it's let's back end load it, I, I think that that's not what we're here for. I, I, I get no, it's but hard, but it's not what we're here for. But I think also part of this is we're working on bringing our system into the 21st century for learning. I think we really need to take a good look at the calendar as far as time on learning. I want to. I want to see information related to psychological well-being in reference to expanded times between vacations. I want to see all of that information. That's what I'm interested in because it is. It's about the kids. And if it requires going back to February, so be it. But I want to see the information. I want to know that we do evidence-based practice here. And that's really what I'd like to see. So, and and doesn't mean you can't get creative at the end of the year. I don't think we need to front load or anything either. Getting creative, I think, is just another way of making it interesting for the kids, making the kids passionate about coming to school. If you break out of the same old, same old, the kids will be excited. So how do you, how do, you do that? I, I think that's something we need to do irrespective of where mm -hmm. the whole year goes. I disagree. Would you move the professional development day on the August 27th? into June, bring the kids back on Tuesday. I recommended that before. Oh, <laughs> again, I think <laughs> what, <laughs> I think that your three, your first day is, is the first day. And then 26. Th then you have three professional development days that you can place anywhere within. I think having them earlier in the year makes more sense to start the year and have if things if going on, if the students are, are more engaged in August than they are in June, do you take that 27th, make it a, a student day? Then you've got four days at least out of the week that are student days. I, I like the idea of kind of ramping up, coming in, getting your feet wet, and then coming for you know the four day week, and then mm -hmm. you do the five day week. So, so for like a four day week. Well, you got the, yeah, you got a three day week, four day week, and then a five day week start the school year. If you have school on that 30th. Right. Yeah. I like the idea of doing school on the kid day and give each one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, but I just, I think ramping up is a good way to keep them engaged. Shaking hands is a good way of keeping them engaged. We'll be discussing this <laughs> in minutes. <laughs> it's Again, <laughs> it's, it's excellent though. Thank, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes, I really thank appreciate you. everybody this coming. This is great. Please come to other meetings with yeah. other ideas too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next item is the consent agenda, the minutes from February 4th, and the bill schedules from February 7th, February 14th, and February 21st. Uh, motion? Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Fail. Uh, we're going to... Um, pass over superintendent scholar student update and the presentation on the service trip as the students are not here tonight and move to item eight is the vote to approve increase in preschool tuition so you have in front of you um, we've never raised tuition in our preschool and of course I don't have it in front of me oh there it is <laughs> 
So we're talking about, um, we compare it to, the Pucky Hell is the closest one that we compare it to. Uh, we're talking about a small increase for, um, for a half day, three day week from $160 to $176, and the three full days from $400 to $440. Um, obviously costs continue to go up. We haven't raised these rates in more than 10 years. Um, and it doesn't generate a lot of money, but an additional $5,000 in revenue goes toward providing those services in our preschool. And how do we pick those numbers? It's 10%. So that's, so you think 10% is the appropriate? We number? haven't raised it in over 10 years. Um, it stays um, below Pucky Huddle, which is a comparative program. So that's the recommendation from Special Ed Director and myself. Do we have a motion? I move to uh, negate it. Okay. I move to approve the increase in the preschool tuition as presented. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 5-0. Uh, the next item is the fiscal 19, fiscal 20 budget updates. Nancy. Uh, in your packet, you'll find the year-to-date budget. And there's one thing I just wanted to cover on that. On page 54, under building supplies and materials for the middle school and the high school, um, the middle school is over by $870.59, and the high school is over by $2,473.90. This is because the HVAC compressor for the chiller on the roof was not working and it needed to be replaced. Um, we have two more compressors that need to be replaced, and we put them in the capital plan for next year. Um, the currently, the overdue two lines can be made up with the early learning center and the elementary school. So at this point in time, we're okay with these line items, but I wanted to. And you told us about this in a prior meeting, I think, didn't you? Not these ones, we made different these ones. These are new ones. Yep. Hmm. yep. So while we're on that, well, one of the other things that um, I want to point out, <coughs> we budget each year $130,000 out of aftercare, and we put that money the simplicity under electricity. But we're not going to need to use all that money toward electricity. So what we're going to do is use some of that money to cover the cost of repairing that ventilation system in the elementary school. We, so we, we apply any revenue there to the elementary early learning center. So we spent over $20,000 this fall repairing some portions of our um, HVAC system. And so we're going to just transfer some of that from electricity to cover some of those costs. Um, because when you think about it, aftercare is used all summer. We run the air conditioning all summer. It's an appropriate place to use that, that revenue source. So I don't think you need to vote on that. We're just making you aware of that. Okay. It's also worth noting that these lines, percentage-wise, it's, it's still fairly large. But these are lines that cover things that can be quite large. When it breaks, it's not going to be we, we blew the budget by 50 bucks as a crayon. It's, it's a compressor, and it's going to be 1200 bucks, $5,000 kind of thing. $10,000, $12,000, 15 These are big That's ticket items. Yeah. I'll remind the committee, though, that in the, the, the capital fund is really doing a yeoman job of getting us ahead of things. In next year's <coughs> budget, is the, in next year's capital fund, is the chiller. So if we place that chiller, that will be huge, will be more efficient. We've placed all of the boilers in our elementary early learning center, and we're seeing savings in oil this year. Um, so, and we're going to continue to, to, to get, a, get ahead of that. With that said, there are things that blow that cost 5000 bucks, and we have to fix them, and we have it in the budget. And then I just want to give you an update on the FY20 budget um, as to where we are. So... Due to some, our current shortfall is at $164,000 because we've made some additional cuts. So the preschool enrollment numbers 
um, have been received. And due to these numbers, we don't need the half-time preschool teacher that we put in the budget. And then we don't need the half-time preschool teacher that is currently in the budget. So we're taking those two out. That's a savings of $61,000. So we also have a speech pathologist who is retiring. And due to this, it's giving us a sa additional savings of $15,000. And then lastly, we have one small add-in for instructional software that should have been put into the budget, but it was missed. So that's for $3,000. And that's for special education services. Yes. So we take taking those out and putting the 3000 in, it brings us to a shortfall of $164,000. As we where we are at this point in time. That's a manageable number at this time. Yeah. Very manageable. And um, <coughs> what I would say is, in years past, I mean, Nancy and I have already gone through and looked for doing our due diligence and looking for savings. But we really need to wait till end of May, early June Let's see what the state is going to do. Let's see if they step up like they've talked about. Um, we also want to see what happens with Circuit Breaker. And we want to see where we are with remaining funds at the end of this year that we don't spend out of Circuit Breaker and school choice before we make some final decisions on how we close that gap. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Thank Thanks, Nancy. Thank We're back okay. to the calendar already. <laughs> a few minutes. <laughs> that was quick. As promised, it was a few minutes. Uh, next item is to discuss the 2019-2020 school calendar. Anybody like to discuss? Again, I mean, I, th I think you guys had mentioned earlier, you've heard from a lot of people from the other side. I feel predominantly um, both people within the school system and people, parents outside of it, have um, really advocated for getting February break back uh, for various reasons. You know, I joke selfishly that I'm somebody who enjoys winter sports and that's why I want it. But um, I, I really do think you, you get kind of weary this time of year and um, I think it could help and I know originally when when I voted to put this in place a shortened break it was we had many winters where we were concerned about pushing up against the edge of, of uh, July and uh, we were trying to find ways that we could we could find additional days um, and we also thought that we would be one of a couple districts putting this in place and then see more come to adopt it and in the time that we've done that I think some have tried it and left fairly quickly and now as far as I'm aware it's just us in Auburn um, and I Auburn doesn't do either February or April no they do they do they do they do April and they do they do what we do their calendar is is a mirror of ours yep. you know one of the things that I'd like to mention is all the other superintendents when I have their meetings they want us to hold strong they want to adopt what we have which addresses some of the concerns of daycare and those things. Um, but they can never seem to move that needle and look at, look at uh, February vacation. I, I did provide attendance for, for those days. And so um, I provided in the packet, it should be, it's online with the school committee. So on that Wednesday, you know, our attendance was probably around 87, 88% as a district. What's baseline? They yeah. sign 95 to 97 percent every day on average. So that's a significant drop in attendance. Obviously on Thursday we had better attendance and then on Friday the attendance again dropped. Uh, the high school was significant in their drop to 77 <coughs> percent. In my notes I have it that um, the Spain students were included and I don't know offhand how many students were on the trip to Spain. Um, so then I, I question a little bit this, the high school numbers on, so on the Thursday. The high school numbers that you published and gave to us included the kids Includes the kids on the trip. Had excused absences. Correct. Just 15 of them. So you can, can you redo the numbers without an excused absences? Well, you can. You can take 14. That's the only place 14 where, that's, where that's the case. Right. 
Yeah. So that's so. You know, that's something that we do have to take serious consideration in because if you have 12% of your students out, it's not that you don't go over new material because they will, but you are going to spend time reviewing that material more often if you have six or seven or eight kids out of your classroom. So that's something we have to consider. Ted, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see the week leading up to this, this week and the week after. Actually, yeah, the whole month of February. I'm more curious whether they're going to go on this fall. Yeah. Whether it's yeah, I want to know. And, and, and you know, I'm also curious, single, single days out. Is it single days mental health? Are we talking single days for sick? Yeah. Uh, there, you know, you're never going to be able to weed that out. But I'm just curious to see what the trend is. You're looking like percentage. Next. Right. I, I'm, yeah. just, I'm looking to see what happened for the month. And what will be trending? Too, if possible. Yeah, I'm yeah. curious about the staff. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you have an issue with uh, staff, particularly those last few days or the week or three, three, three days. Or four. Those three days. Yeah. I have that information as well. Yeah. I just a side note. I um, have a friend who lives in Auburn. I just asked him about the same. They have the they have school the last three days of that week. I said, "How do you feel about it?" And he said, "I I don't really carry it carried away." I said, "Oh, the following week he pulled his kids out of school and went to Florida." So I, I'm looking at the Auburn calendar. I, I don't see their, um, their week off in April. That was in that information you gave us from all the superintendents. That Auburn they don't has. have Auburn? I, I could be reading it wrong. They have the Monday and Tuesday off that we do currently. For February. Oh, for oh February. That, April. Right. Yeah. Um, I yeah. talk to Mary Ellen a lot. And I, I, so I could be reading the calendar wrong. I can't imagine, do they just have Monday Patriots Day off? Our calendar is easier to read than Auburn's. That's because of Diane. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if I were to look at, if I were to look at yeah. draft three, which all the feedback I've received, well, first of all, one of the things I was gonna recommend for this committee tonight, I had my superintendent's coffee um, no one comes, one or two people come. This last meeting I had 12 or 13 parents. You're welcome. You see, and I say let's have so a half day on the 24th. And, I, and, and, You're and, welcome. And, 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 it was, and it was so much better of a meeting because you had more people <laughs> talking. And I love the comments that I heard tonight um, because, you know, we sometimes get wrapped into our own thought process and you hear different points of view on this vacation week that I didn't even think of until I heard some of the comments tonight. Um, but calendars just kind of happen. This is how they are, and we're tweaking around the edges. Um, but if, if I were to make any recommendation, I would say you have a calendar option one, calendar option draft three. I would put in the 30th. I would make, because someone made a great point, the way we do it now, you have, a, you have two weeks in a row that are, our sh messed up weeks. <laughs> if you go back to February vacation, you just have that one straight week and, and you only have one week. Um, and if you put if you put Good Friday in, if you don't put Good Friday in and you're worried about attendance and you go back to the 30th, you're still getting out on June 12th. Mm -hmm. um, this is an anomaly year where we've only had one snow day. Uh, we've, we've seen six, eight, nine snow days in a given year since I've been here. And I think when Christmas is dropped right in the middle of a week, it really forces you yes. to stretch that break. So it, it does shift a little bit in the next year or two. Yeah. And I, th you know, as, as much as I'm playing on the 30th and 31st, those are tough days. I, I just, yeah. coming in for Monday is ridiculous and coming in on the 31st is, of course it is. is, is it's yeah. really fun. But you could do a full day on the 20th. I would suggest that you change that yeah. to a full day. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the notion of getting rid of half days where they're not professional development, there are a couple of them, right? And you pull back the 30th of August, that gives you two days. In At Labor February. Day weekend, I, if anybody's watching and thinking, oh, no, great, I got 24th, but I lost the Labor Day weekend, I'm curious whether there's a feedback there. Yeah. So my thought would be we draft two calendars, or, or, or maybe three. You do, you do the first one, the one we run now. We do option three, and we send out a survey. 
we put these calendars out in the survey. Doesn't doesn't cost us anything. We already paid for it. I, again, I don't want the input. I think people coming and and talking is fantastic. It really is great feedback. I, I worry a little bit about a survey where the five of us really should talk about these ideas. Are we learning something different? Mm -hmm. I think the folks who have come have represented a really well thought out concerns. I worry about you ask a survey and everybody says this and we don't do this and that's sort of the way it works. I, don't, I, have, I have a problem either way. And we, and we did receive emails as well. Mm -hmm. And okay. there's opportunity for another Absolutely. meeting. We're not going to vote. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think this is happening in the background. I think if folks are concerned about it, they've got the ability to, to come and speak to them. We really are interested. I, so my concern, just like <coughs> from day one, is I just want to make sure that we have steady, solid blocks of learning time mm -hmm. for kids. Uh, a couple of the, the people today spoke about chopping things up into little groups. And again, I'm not an educator. Um, some people question whether I'm educated at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but I, I mean, I don't see how kids can learn when they go in very short, in very short blocks and then there's an interruption. Uh, I don't see how teachers can teach and, 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 and part of that is recognizing what kids are learning things and how they're learning things. In the beginning, you need big, I think they need bigger blocks, especially at the younger ages, so that the teachers can identify the, the strengths and the weaknesses and the needs of the students. Um, I, when kids get older, I think they adapt to this, but to go a few days and have a break, and to go a few days and have a break, um, man, it makes me want to go back to school then instead of have yeah. a job yeah. this, well, you know, I think that's not I think how life works but I mean you, you look at this uh, you, we've got l big chunks in, in early and I know we're, we're held to certain holidays that we can't we have no flexibility on um, you know, I understand the mental health part of it uh, I would say that in um, the northern half of the country um, the mental health part of it in winter doesn't just apply to education, it applies to everyone. Yep. And it's nothing that we can change. Um, the illness part of it, I understand the illness part of it. I have to ride the train to work. <laughs> it's sick people on the train. People, yeah. I have to go into an office. There are sick people in the office. It's the same way everywhere. Um, what, what frustrates me with this is when I hear um, people say um, that if we don't have February vacation, I'm just gonna take my kids out of school and go on vacation. That's the part that's disheartening to me. Um, you're not doing, I don't think you're doing a kid any justice by taking them out of school because you wanna go on vacation. Um, you know, that, that part bothers me. Um, the other part that, while I appreciate the, um, the, the folks that have kids and uh, need to find uh, child care for, the, for their kids, um, you know, this ske the schedule comes out before the school year starts, uh, so there's plenty of time to plan to make those arrangements. Um, those people who don't, uh, don't work in education they can't predict snow days and the interruption to their schedules that way. Um, you know, that's just that's just how it works. Um, you know. I do think I, I, I'm serious. I, I get the slow start, but I, we have had the 28th and 29th as school days, and and I'm pretty confident. Been told those are sort of startup days. When you suggest to add the 30th feels to me like, okay, well, let's make that week an honest week at school and start up the first two and then do some work the next two. I, I, I do think we should consider that 27th um, because, I, and, and I've been looking at the 180th day, but as you say, we've had a good year for snow days. 
we're going deep into June. I think we've said June days are pretty tough. Uh, find new things to do it. I'd like to kick that, that idea around. I, I hear you say let's start slow, but if they've I'm got not, a lot I'm of energy, let's... I'm not married to it. I, 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 I like the concept, but I'm not married to it. <coughs> so I, I want to take a step back, and, and, and I appreciate what you said, you know, about, you know, everybody deals with the emotional time. Um, and we often want to compare the school to a corporate structure, professional structure. Um, but I think we have to remember it's, it's kids. I mean, yes, oh, we're all shit. sick, but I don't have a lot of people at my office that openly pick their nose or <laughs> sneeze in their hand. Um, so that, that adds to the challenge. I, you know, you and if you do, you training. might want to work somewhere else. Um, right. You need to ride the commuter rail. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay, I don't ride the commuter rail. Um, it's it. not the picking of the problem, it's what you do after you get. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Right that is true. Problems. So I, I always have a challenge because my mind tends to go there, too. I compare it to my experience. and. I have to step back and realize it's, it's two different worlds. Um, and I look back, as you brought up the 30th, I, I'd be on board with doing the 30th. You just got off of a summer break. I don't know that we need to make a three-day weekend, a four-day weekend. And the 27th, I don't know if we move that professional development day. We've got to put it somewhere else. Put it in June. No. Doesn't it make sense to do the professional for the teachers? towards the beginning of the year so that they have quiet for the year then? There, there are lots of ways to, to do, do that. It. And there are lots of trade-offs. There's nothing mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we say the days for the kids in June don't work very well, then then let's find days that do. Right? And so that's 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 why I'm looking. I think the Labor Day weekend thing is, all, is a big problem, right? I mean, I yeah. used to talk about why are we starting before Labor Day, but I, I don't know how to beat that with the yeah. schedule. And once you say, well, let's take the 30th, then, then the long weekend, I don't like the winter sports as much as the summer sports, and, and there are a lot of people who get Labor Day weekend off. It's really easy to get days off yeah. around Labor Day. What we're saying is in Sutton, you gotta get home because you're really just got the three-day weekend, have a picnic, don't, don't go out. Yeah. Um, but again, there's, there's a trade-off, right? None of these are perfect. It's why I'm asking folks, what do you like, what don't you like, I get it. You want to put February in there? I, let's find a way to put February, but don't tell me we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of success in June. I had twelve or thirteen parents around the table. I w there would be twelve or thirteen calendars um, <laughs> if you asked them. They're all good ideas because everybody has points of view. <laughs> the December twentieth half day that, that counts as one of. 180, whether it's a half day it, or yeah. full as long day, as you make the half day, day it's reason to not okay. call it a half day. Okay. You don't need the half day because something's going on. That okay, fine. Now so you make the 30th a half day. And just one point about um, the precepts, like you were saying, about the consistency. And there, there is definitely a group of children all the way up from first grade, kindergarten, all the way up to the senior who can't wait to get to school, who work hard five days a week. There's a large portion of them that also, they need that break. Yeah. Breaking the week up a little bit. I've had um, some of my own kids, they need to take a lap in the middle of the day. Just, you know, break from school, get up, walk around. And some of that stepping away from the school for a longer period of time, maybe it's not all with your own family. Um, I like to go away with my brother's family. They have a full day week. We don't, so we don't actually get, make a plan to go away and play together because it just doesn't work the way it normally. And I know that's, you know, kids see other kids, they, they're kind of stuck in, in Sutton, it's an insulated community. Kids see who they see, giving them an opportunity to go away, see some <coughs> other people, see some other things. This is on the, the February, right? This is on February. <coughs> yeah, so I, I don't like either of the calendars, <laughs> as you know. Well, the, the only way to solve the issue that you and I kind of have mm -hmm. is the state has to step in. And, and because every argument that we have, the minute you deviate from the agrarian calendar, you run into all of the things that were talked about tonight. And so unless the state says, because we do all the testing in April, May, and June, we, we want to reshift and say no one can do an April vacation, so you're forced to do some type of configuration. Um, but what, what I would say is, what I'm hearing is draft three, 
the way it sits, what you're looking at right now, I think there's consensus to make the 20th a full day. At the, yeah. Other yeah. than that, we keep, we keep we keep of August. Is there consensus on that? Ah. Or, or, so I would say, so I would say there'd be three drafts. The not not the not, not still, no, <laughs> num <laughs> number two's out. You have the original yeah. mar marrying of what we do now. The draft that was presented tonight with the twentieth becoming a full day, and then the third draft with adding the thirtieth as a day, and then there's more question about do you move the professional development day on the 28th maybe somewhere else within the calendar uh, you know again I, I don't I don't know where I that would go could we would you want to start school on the 27th and make the 30th the professional development that way the students have the 30th off no. in August I'd keep I'd still put the, put the professional development it just flips the, the yeah no I just flips I, I it if, if there if there were a lot of parents who came back and said I, I don't like the winter sports, I like that Labor Day weekend. I think it's it's blocking. But, but it hang on, blocking. let me just go back. Is there? Mm, all right, it's the kids, right? So I understand the parents are attached to the kids, but I'm I'm concerned about time and learning. I'm too concer concerned about mental health. I want to see what's best for the kids. And I just I don't know. I just don't see it in any of these calendars. I yeah. Um, you, can't, you can't go weekends. <coughs> <laughs> I, I no, still I I'm still not of the in, belief in I'm January they check out. I'm still not of the and I know there was discussion earlier that I think well I'm sorry, I'm sorry, June. I'm still not of the belief that June they check out. I think they check out days before it's done. If that last day is the twentieth, yeah, maybe you know the seventeenth. But, but maybe that's what we've been told they but, check out. That but maybe that also the signals we need to out. change yeah. how we're how Every we're teaching. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's not just a symptom of the end of school, maybe it's a symptom of the full school year. So how do we yeah. re-examine how we, how we educate our kids? So remember the STEM week? The, the yeah, success which we was huge. That? The kids loved it. Shift that somewhere Engage, where the kids Yes, you can, you can engage out. the kids. The kids something can different, still different learn what education. they need to if we do something innovative. Yeah. Isn't that what we need to do to get to the 21st century learning? And it's a great idea, and, and I, I'm, I'm with you. I think the answer around we have to do it different needs to be kicked around a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you pull in two weeks of what was meant to be time on learning the way we think we're supposed to do it, come to me and tell me how we're going to do it differently. Don't just take 14 days away. No, no, I'm not. I, no, I, 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 we we want to, you know, I mentioned that because there are a number of school districts that are doing that. I don't ever like to be the first one to do it. Mm -hmm. I like to jump in. Let's see what comes out of those other communities ask some questions, probe with those communities, what's working, what's not working. Um, and it has to be academic. Um, but again, that's STEM week. Now, STEM week is going to be in the fall because that's when it's done, that's where we get the grant, that's where we do those things. But that was energizing. Um, and you can have this too. It's stepping out of the box, and that's what we need to do. But in the end, we have to go 180 days mm -hmm. between the Monday the earliest we can go is August 26th, and we have to be out by June 30th. Those are the parameters that we have. And, you know, it's interesting. When you look at draft three, it's a pretty, there's large chunks of, of learning time in that calendar. We, we really are doing, it's good. doing a lot of debate around three days and some, some halves, right? The, the, what we're moving, not a lot's been changed or invented. Like I said earlier, the if you took a look at the two calendars, the left-hand columns are currently identical. There's no there's no change in those at all. Everything is on the right column, unless we do some things in August, December. The two days in August, the 26th and 27th. The 27th is a professional day. What what is done on the 26th? Oh, I'm sorry. The 26th is opening day. And um, what's it's contractual? Time? So we have our opening day. There's union meetings. And contractually, the teachers get two hours to work in their classroom. So that's opening day. The second day is a professional development day, the 27th. Um, and then, you know, I never worked in a district where, where you had the day off before Labor Day weekend. And it wasn't until I came here that that day appeared. And so it was kind of surprising. Worcester now goes back 
and they do professional development on the 22nd and 23rd, and they do five days before Labor Day. But they've already taken six or seven um, snow days. They have a lot more snow days because they have so many walkers. I'm tired of my daughter getting up after I've done three quarters of the driveway and she comes out to help me shovel the driveway <laughs> yeah. when it's almost done. So I see three drafts. Douglas is doing the um, August 31st. This year they took August 31st off. So they did the four, four days. There are a number of them. In the valley, there's a bunch of, it's all, it's all what other, what Uxbridge. the towns around you do. Most of them do it around here. Um, I, I think kids are ready. That's why I always said um, I would start school earlier. <laughs> no one likes that idea. Everybody I'm, I'm, I'm always, uh, kids are ready. They've had a long summer. They're ready to come back. They're also ready to go and the sun's out, the days are long, the weather's nice. They're ready. But in the end, I think we have potentially three drafts that we can kick around a little bit more at the next meeting. Is it unheard of? Like, yeah, most of the stuff I come up with is. Um, is it not feasible or practicable to have two professional, consecutive professional development days? Yeah, I'd love to see We've done that days. before. We've done that when we, um, a number of districts front load and you do, yeah, we could do that as well. People so what I'm yeah. what I'm thinking, yeah. what I'm thinking is, if we were to start on the 27th and take that professional day and move that professional day to a full day on October 10th, and take the October 10th half day and move that to um, Good Friday, um, with. With the days that we're adding in, now there's the three days that you can fill back in on February vacation. So the tenth became a full day off. So it it would be in the middle of October. There would be a essentially a five day break for students. Well, not allowed to count the weekends. But okay, there would be a <laughs> three day break. That's right. the weekends don't count. Um, there would be a five day. There would be a Three school, three school day, two day weekend break. <laughs> um, Did you get that done? Yeah. Interesting. And so then you go to school the 27th to the 30th. So you get four school days. Four school days, you get Labor Day weekend off, and then you go four school days, and then you start right into Your one, two, weeks. three, four, four full day weeks and a three day week. So there's a 20, what? 27 day, 20, 27 day stretch uninterrupted. Hopefully we won't have any snow days. Um, and then you get a break in October, you come back and you go five, 10, 15, 14 days till Veteran Day. I mean, November you is a tough Coffee, month because yeah. of the holidays, but. Um, and you do have to have parent conferences. That's the seventh, I believe. And, and you can add, well, yeah. You gotta have that, you, you, you know, you've gotta get parents in. And, um, so that's another calendar die. So that's four calendars. I've been messing around in Excel, because I have yep. a calendar where, I, as you guys keep talking, I keep doing full day, half day, and okay. take it account. Is that, happy to share that if oh, yeah. we'll look at that. people wanna, sure. I mean, it's, it's just as you're doing these things, it's a little quicker and it tells you whether you got to the 180 days. So you're talking move the professional development day on the 27th out of that first week in yes. October. Yes, make it four yeah, days. I, I gotta believe there's some value in having that at the beginning of the year to start things off. And and I don't necessarily think 27 straight days is the best thing either. I think some of those kids need a little break in there somewhere, just a day, half a day, here or there. They get two. Every yeah. fifth day, they get two days. Yep. <laughs> so one of those. Yeah. Every fifth day, they get two days. And then if you look at it, as you start to draw these things out, you get three or four weeks. And then you get a half, you get a partial week. And then you get three or four weeks, and you get a partial week. It's, 
at one point or another, you, you got to tell me where the good days are and why we aren't going to school on those good days. Or how we can make it better. Better spent. Time better spent. I think we're pretty close. I think mm -hmm. either, either one of these you look at. The, the issue with the professional development day, that first day, we do parent back to school with parents right after school. That was the, what time did it start? Three o'clock. Three o'clock in the afternoon is when parents come in and the early learning is in elementary. So that's part of what we, we look at. So that might be something we'd have to just consider. But I would put I, I put that out as a as a draft though, something to consider. I still want to see what's happening in February with everybody. I'm I'm still curious to see what how the month trends in general. Oh. In all schools. And I still think there's also this, this trade off, right? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think I don't think anybody has prescribed no, anything that it's gonna be perfect. Is is really no. crazy. The question is what's what's in my mind best for the kids, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we are sort of valuing what's the value of the twenty seventh. I get it, it's a value. What's the value of not going into the You're going to get the week of the 15th. You're going to get snow days, but not going into the week of June 22. So right. let's look at these three, four. Four? There's four. four. There's the current one. There's draft, Perhaps. current draft number three, making December 20th a full day. Then there's draft number, th the new number three that would add the 30th. Mm -hmm. And and then there's the fourth one that would move the professional development day on the 27th, move that to this October 10th, and move the half day that October 10th to the Good Friday, make that half day PD day in October, the half day PD day on Good Friday. Hey, I, I had one other question in May. Why are we doing the half day on the 29th yeah. versus the 22nd? Because that's the prom. Yeah, I asked that last time. If the prom's late this year. That's the prom. The kids all I get dismissed at 10.30 in the morning. Mm. And, you know, they've got to get their nails all done. Kids. And they've got to get their hair done. done. Mm -hmm. There are some priorities. That's time on learning at its peak mm -hmm. uh, prom. I'm so glad that I'm a grandfather <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to do this at the prom anymore. We, just on a side note, we got rid of all the prom dresses out of my basement two weeks ago. It was like the greatest day of my uh, life. Uh, uh, Carrying those suckers out. <laughs> Done. Thousands of dollars in just, gowns yes. <laughs> going out the door for one night. So uh, do we I need digress. to continue the discussion on the school calendar? Are we good? We'll take a look at the four options that come from Die. Yeah. We can have discussion on the next four. Anyway. Absolutely. We can put it on the... So the eight, why don't we do the April meeting. We'll put them on the calendar, allow people to make comments, and then the f we'll decide on the first weekend, in April, the first Monday in April. Does yes. that sound right? For those that are still watching, please send comments. Yeah, or come those back. at home. Or come in yeah. in two weeks. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, next item is the second reading of policies. This would be uh, fiscal management goals, annual budget, budget deadlines and schedules, and budget planning. Any comments or questions? They are red lines, obviously, yes. so, and they're on the internet so folks can read. You can't okay. find them in the packet. All right. The next item is the Subcommittee for a District Survey. I do believe at our September 10th meeting, that was Kristen and Pete. Yep. So we'll have to uh, have to start getting that together. I know you did make a lot of changes last year. Um, I think we learned some things out of the survey that. No, we I think we're trending in the right direction. Yes, I don't, I but don't. we we do need to make sure that um, uh, when 
when we do get comments um, that um, the results are um, um, cleansed of any names yep. um, prior to any um, we can do that. dissemination. Yep. usually released or they usually send that out when is that a may may and then we that's one of the things we do at the summer, summer retreat. retreat right okay and we can put it online we'll just take away any names or any comments that are made that are inappropriate but I, and I think that sort of is part of the policy of it's just a survey we come back to administration to make sure they approve yep. if we're filtering it out. Okay. Next item is the superintendent's update. So speaking of mental health, um, we did a week of daily advisory period, which was a like a 25 minute period in the morning for our high school students. Um, and it was well received by staff and students. Um, and so that's something we're looking at doing next year. One of the things I saw kids who were like me who were in playing basketball and shooting hoops and doing that. I saw some kids doing homework. I saw some kids just hanging out with their friends and, and talking and relaxing for 25 minutes. So, you know, I think it's going to be something that we have to monitor, but I think it's going to be successful. Um, and as I said before, we should be making decisions that are in the best interest of children. That we talk about that often. And oftentimes you have a handful of kids that are not mature enough. And we're not going to let a handful of kids ruin it for the kids who really use that time to the best, to their advantage. Uh, ski club was very successful. Very few ambulance rides this year, which was good. Um, I always were there any those Tuesday nights I get the calls from Jerry uh, Ted uh, I think there was one I think there was just yeah. one ambulance ride this year which I think is a record um, the tech committee at the middle school is very excited about the their PD day in March at the middle school and the English uh, language arts vertical writing committee has met several times they built a binder um, including artifacts that are moving that that um, district wide goal forward so I'll be providing as part of my goals that binder for the committee to review which was part of my goal the elementary school has the stories to stage performances um, that's the, the green bean performances which is great um, that'll be Friday March 20th at 6 p.m. and Saturday March 23rd at 5 p.m. students in grades K to 5 will be performing Oh, and then MCAS training for all teachers is scheduled for March 11th at their faculty meeting. Testing for grades 2 to 5 will begin on April 23rd. All testing is computer-based. What's different this year about testing is grades 3 through 10, grade 3 through 11, is all now computer-based testing. And so it starts in March. It goes into June. Um, across the district so it does take over your your school uh, quite a bit in the early learning center grade K registration will be held in April screen will be in June uh, sorry it takes over the school for the third for the for the early learning center how long are those kids tested early learning center is not tested grade K, they so they the do map school, testing how long are they tested um, they have your English language. I, I don't know exactly how many sessions it is, but it's it's five days, seven days. It's like five, five days of testing, five. three and two, like three and two, and then you have science in some grades, so it might be seven days. So in the middle school, about the same, about depending the same. on what grade. And in the high school, um, high school about the same as so well. So it takes over the school because you're doing it all online. Any individual child isn't being tested March through June. 
No, but the district has taken over. Your computer labs have taken over. Right. Um, you know, I'd love to see, and I've said this, if, if they could just get down to one day of math, one day of English, mm -hmm. one day of science, I think it's a, that's a realistic expectation. You should be able to design a test yeah. that can measure that, but that's not the world we live in. Our current commissioner is a believer in testing, but testing as I just described. Can they do a full day? So when, when we say it's two or three days, if somebody in the um, middle school comes in and the entire day is testing? It's the new test, MCAS 2.0, is designed to be timed, um, but some kids take a good portion of the day when they're doing the test. What, what is the expectation? I, I get some hour and, and a half. Time. So it's about an hour and a half a day for a couple of days, and then the rest of the time you're, you're covering. Definitely focus on all the classes. And, and you're right, because we, we make such a big deal of it. We can't do homework. We can't do this. We, you know, we got to take breaks. We, we've just made this 25-year monster. And, and we just described it as four months of testing, and it's terrible. And I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not as big a fan of testing as it might sound right now, but I, I'm not sure that that's an accurate depiction of what it can and should be. Well, so if you're an elementary principal, you've got three grades of five days of testing, maybe one grade of seven. Right. No so sympathy for the, your for the principal, employees. Your I get principal's it. tied <laughs> up. <laughs> their, their life is hard. Your, no, it, but, yeah. but, but it ties up your school is what I'm yeah. saying. It, it, um, and, and there is built-in pressure, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that kids feel and, and staff feel. Um, but we do get good data from it. I just wish there was a way that we could make it so it wasn't as, like I said, if you had two days of testing, then you're finishing, you're testing your whole school in five days, six days, it's over. That's a very reasonable time. You frame. have to have a lot of lab space. If you're gonna do it online. We use a lot of. I'm just saying, I mean, because it'd be great if you could take the whole building, right, and say it's we do. Test test day and we just get it. Well, we, we take, don't have a computer we, we, for we, every child, so we, we take, can't possibly do that. Well, we, we marry up. We do, um, so w we can take a whole grade. You lose no, we, no, we do for, for a long right. Time. You can take a whole grade. You, can't, you, can't, you, take a whole you can't take the whole district. Oh no, 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 no! Down. It's going to be spread out yes. over a long period of time because there are a lot of grades. Or you choose, let's not do it to every grade. Yeah, well, that would be another like the original fourth, eighth, and twelfth. Well, right. I mean fourth, eighth, and tenth. All right, but are we all okay. set with? Uh, I mean, is the equipment being checked and prepped and yes. ready? We'll, we'll be no ready. No issues. No issues. Okay. Um, the Millbury Sutton Public Schools are partnering to offer a free workshop for parents and professionals um, for the basic rights and special education. It will be held on Tuesday, March 5th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Millbury Junior and Senior High School. So parents of special needs students or people in the field, if they want to understand the basic rights of special education, they're able to go to that. A presenter from the Federation of Children with Special Needs will conduct the workshop. Facilities, I mentioned the hot water heaters at the high school. Um, if you're ever around the high school, I'll take you out into the loading dock area where you can see the corrosion. Um, they will be replacing both of those PVI, the $10,000 units, they're having to replace them because they're under warranty. So we'll have one, we'll get that one op operational, we'll take the owner offline, inspect that, if it needs to be replaced, we'll get it replaced as well. So kudos to Roger Raymond. Um, the drama club in the middle school will be performing Homes on the Range <laughs> <laughs> on March 8th at 6 p.m. and Saturday, March 9th at 12, 12 noon. Um, some miscellaneous, the district learning team um, will be meeting on March 6th. That's um, that's this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Meet the coach night for the spring sports is Monday, March 11th at 6.30 p.m. And the connections conference will be Thursday, March 14th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
And then finally, the next school committee meeting is March 18th. We'll invite the students to come in and present Haiti, the student update, and the student and the superintendent scholar. And we'll also focus that night on the presentation for FinCom and make sure that we're all on the same page with what we're going to present at FinCom that evening. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Any new business agenda items or action <coughs> items? Seeing none, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.